So let's take a moment, center ourselves, knowing that the Christ is our true teacher, so we listen within. Amen. And here is our affirmation. And Janelle, again, thank you for the signing. And she's going to sign this beautiful affirmation for us. So come on up. And she can explain the signs, which they're amazing. Yeah. So here we go. So I'll affirm it in once, and then we'll uh, work with Janelle to get the motions. In its entirety, that's not what we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you like three signs, but I'm going to show you what it looks like in its entirety. Okay, so here we go. My transformed consciousness is the new heaven and the new earth. I shine my Christ light. All right. So you want to tell us what the signs, the ones you're going to teach us, what they mean? So we can do that? Knowledge, it's a different thing is one finger, knowledge is all fingers. Ah, uh, so it's includes first, wisdom. Wisdom. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, the knowledge, so to my consciousness, I, I sign that as knowledge. And then new is just scooping dirt. If you could imagine scooping dirt. And that is new. That is a sign for new. Uh, and um, heaven, I just name it however you see it. However Expansion, the yeah. it's, 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 yeah, that's, that's all it is. And so there's no right or wrong sign to that. And then we've got new again. Sign new is the picture. And then earth is just earth. It's just a, that's your earth. Different than the world. It's the yeah, world. it's earth. The world is the earth. All right. It's a different sign. Uh-huh. That's earth. And uh, I just, I shine. I just came, you can come. I wasn't sure. I like that. Let's okay, do so that. So I just took it. There's no right or wrong. I just took it and I just came up. Shine. I just shined my light. So All right. That was so, yes, let's take a breath. <sighs> Release. All right, let's affirm this and we'll affirm it our three times. Not to make it true because it is true. Here we go. My transformed consciousness is the new heaven and the new earth. I shine my Christ light. It's beautiful. See you shining. Yeah. (laughs) Let's do it again. My transformed consciousness is the new heaven and the new earth. I shine my Christ light. <sighs> Breathe, let that energy move through. <sighs> and let's affirm it the third time. All right. My transformed consciousness is the new heaven and the new earth. I shine my Christ light. Thank you. Wow, you feel it? That's the truth. That's what we're being called to, friends. There's a story about a father who loved his little son, of course, and uh, loved to play with his little son when he came home from work. But this one day when he was at work, this one afternoon, he knew that he was going to have to do some extra work when he got home. So he thought, what can I give my little boy to do so that, you know, he'll have something to occupy him and he'll know I love him, but I can't really take time, you know, right when I get home. It's going to be a few hours before I can have time to play with him. So the father happened to have a newspaper there and he looked through it and he noticed that on that newspaper there was a big picture of the a map of the world. And, and, and so he thought, oh, that's it. I'll take this this picture of the map of the world and I'll tear it into little pieces, put it in my pocket, take it home and tell my son, okay, here's a jigsaw puzzle for you and put it together. So that'll take him hours and I'll have time to get my work done and then we can play. So he does that. He he tears it up, puts it in his pocket. He goes home. He sees his son. He says, dad, dad, I'm glad to see you. Let's play. And dad says, oh, I want to, but I can't. I got some work I've got to do, extra work. But here I've got something for you to play with. And then when you're done playing with it, I'll be done with my work and and we'll we'll have some time together. So he pulls out all the pieces and he puts them on the kitchen table and he says, 
uh, he says, here, son, put this map of the world together. The father goes off and is doing his work, and he's figuring this is going to take him hours, you know. I'll have time to get my work done. So um, the little boy comes back in half an hour, and he says, Dad, I got it all put together. And his father said, that's impossible. How could you do that? So the little boy says, come see. So he comes, and, and there it is. It's all on the table. The map of the world is put together perfectly, and he taped it together and everything. And the father says, how did you do that? And you know the answer to this. You've heard this story before. You know? Oh, good. He said, he said, Dad, because on the other side, there was a picture of a person. <laughs> and when I put the person together, the world came together. That's the truth, isn't it? That's the truth. It's very, very simple. And it requires of us so much. It requires of us everything. It requires of us honesty, openness, willingness, courage, faith, power. Sometimes as spiritual people, we don't like to talk about power. And that's how we get ourselves in trouble, because we let ourselves be dominated by personality and by fear. And that is not God's way. No. Power, spiritual power, constructive power, power from the inner Christ, power from the creative source of this universe, of the creative source of our lives. We are called as people who are awakening spiritually to use our power to create good. That's the point. That's the message. That's what we are here for. This week has been a hard week. It's been a hard week for, I think, I'm making an assumption here, but unless you're pretty much dead, I think it was a hard week for everybody, and it should have been. I cried, I raged, and I did the work, and I'm still doing it, to feel the feelings, to feel the emotions, and to let it move through because our hearts are cracked open and they need to be. I hope your heart cracked open because that's the way to healing, that's the way to life, that's the way to light. You know, our brother Jesus let his heart crack open, didn't he? On more than one occasion. When his friend Lazarus died, we, we know what's the shortest verse in the Bible, what does it say? Jesus wept. He wept. He let himself be frustrated by his disciples. He would say, like, how long do I have to put up with you? You don't get it. He got angry with people that were violating the sacredness of the temple of the holy consciousness, and he drove them out. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he lay on the ground, and he sweat great drops of blood, and he said to God, can't this cup pass from me? Come on. And I'll tell you, I don't think he was worried about suffering. I think he, he wasn't worried about that. That's not, in my mind, what he was talking about. He wasn't scared about the coming crucifixion. I believe that he was saying, this is so much work to let go of the fear. It is so much work. To, to deal with myself and come to a new understanding of me, do I really have to do this? You know what God said. What did God say? Yes. Yes, you do. Now get out there and do it. And Jesus said, thy will, not mine, be done. Thy will, not mine, be done. And that is not about God's will is for him to get crucified. Oh, please. No, that is not the point. God's will is for him to do the work, to do the work, to release in consciousness, and that's our understanding of what that crucifixion was about. Jesus wasn't crucified for our sins. He was crucified by them. And what that means is that that business that we get into in human consciousness of fear and being afraid of change and being afraid of the good and being afraid of real constructive spiritual power is what kills us in all kinds of ways, physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. It's what puts us to sleep. That's part of the human condition. It's okay. Because God is always in the midst of us. Human beings are wonderful. 
We are absolutely glorious. And God is about saying to us all the time, I love you. I'm here. It's okay. Do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Find me in the very midst of you. Let, crucify that in you, which is based in fear. Crucify that in you, meaning let it go. I don't mean suffer, but let it go. Let it die. That's what needs to die. That's the consciousness that is going. And let the good come forth. Let this new heaven and this new earth be born in you. For indeed, that's why we're here. We are one with the upward progressive movement of life. That's why we're here. That's the truth about us. My friends, not only are we on this planet, I've said this before, and I, I read all these astronomy magazines, and I go out to Fort Davis and, you know, to the McDonald Observatory and talk to the astronomers. I have no doubt, friends, that we are going to be heading out to other planets. And it matters what consciousness we take. So we're doing it for ourselves here and now, we're doing it for our earth, and we're doing it for where we're heading. Because we just landed something, we're circ circulating on uh, Jupiter, right? We're going farther and farther and farther. We already went to Pluto. We're going out there and it matters what consciousness we take. And it matters, of course, of course, it matters here and now what consciousness we are living in. That's the opportunity. So. We do as our brother Jesus did. We use our Christ power of release to uh, deal with the feelings. Don't run away from the feelings. They'll just get stuck in you. We have feelings. That's not bad. But, but deal with them. Face them. Address them. Feel them. And let them move through. Let that energy move through because that energizes us to make space for that uh, higher and better spiritual understanding. And those are our Christ powers. Jesus always calls his disciples to him, didn't he? And that's our 12 powers and in particular, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he called to him the three disciples, faith, love, and wisdom. And that's what we're calling to us in that new space so that we may create that which we are destined to create. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, and, and in the usual translation, you know, there's one part where he says, uh, God, why have you forsaken me? Father, why have you forsaken me? And another translation, the translation that George Lamsa um, it talks about, and he was an Aramaic speaker who was a friend of unity, and he uh, translated the Bible and wrote many uh, commentaries on it from, that, from the uh, Middle Eastern perspective. And George Lamps has said, well, you know, fine, but there's another translation of that. And the other translation of that phrase is, for this I came. For this I came. That's why I'm here. To let go of this stuff, to prove that death has no power. Death, death, where is thy sting? and that to move into the resurrection, to move into that new heaven and that new earth, to give us the energy, to give us the vision, to give us the hope and the power to do what we are here to do. So my friends, we're saying the same thing. For this I came. It's not an accident that you and I and everybody else on this planet is here at this moment in this time in this place because there's big work to do. We're in a time of shift. We're in a time of transition. We are in a time of transformation. And we are, there. the upheave is here. You know, in unity, we have that good old-fashioned term called chemicalization. And so whatever is unlike God, whatever is unlike good, will surface so that we can see it and address it and release it. We're in it. So what do we do when we're in that time of chemicalization? We do what our brother Jesus did. We feel it, we release it, and we hold to the good. We call to us our power. We call to us our God awareness and that God presence. You know, the only thing that really changes anything is transformation of consciousness. We can feel helpless, we can feel frustrated, we can feel angry, we can feel despair, we can feel sad, and we can wait around and think, when is somebody going to do something? Have you thought about that? I have. Why don't those other people just do better? Why? Why, 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 why? When I hear myself saying, why, 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 what I'm really saying is this is so painful I can hardly stand it. That's what's really being said. And so the invitation to me is always, it's always an unproductive question to say, when are those people going to have had enough? Whoever we think those people are, and we might all have different definitions of who they are, who ought to be doing something different. But whoever they are, who we think ought to be doing something different, and why don't they do something better? That is always an unproductive question. 
And so when we can turn that around and say, when am I going to start doing something better? That changes everything, doesn't it? Changes everything. And what is the better? And I'm not here to guilt people or like, oh, I, ooh, that's so unproductive. So please don't hear it that way. But what we can always do differently is to transform our own consciousness. And when are we supposed to transform our own consciousness? Now. And every single minute. That's the point. Is to, and what are we transforming it from? From fear to love. From anxiety to faith. From despair to joy. That's what we're always doing. And because God is in the midst of us, that that energy, that power, and that presence is always there. And we do the work to find it. And one of the things that we do to find it, and Jesus was always doing this, is we hold a vision. We hold a vision. And so I'm going to share with you this vision that uh, Sharon just sang about. And this vision that uh, is in the very last chapters of the book of Revelation. Now, those of you that took the class, the book of Revelation, just a uh, month or so ago, you know that the book of Revelation is really not a scary book at all. It's a wonderful book. It's one, it is, frankly, the most hopeful book in the Bible. It's amazing. And anybody that tells you differently, and anybody that says, oh, it's scary, it, it is about the end of the world, but in kind of a different way. It's about the end of our consciousness of fear. And anybody that tells you it's scary and it's about the world ending in a ball of flame uh, is... A, not aware of the, love, loving, uh, uh, con the loving presence of God, and B, has not availed themselves of any factual information about the writing of that book. So, it's a book about love, it's a book about possibility, and it's a book about what we need to do to create that. So I'm going to share with you this vision, and I'm going to ask you to hold this vision with me. So this is in verse 20, uh, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. This is at the... I want you to know this is at the end of the book of Revelation, right? Okay. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne, and that's God, the presence of God. This is a mystical vision. This is a mystical vision. <laughs> said, see, I'm making all things new. And also he said, write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. And one thing we noticed in the class, we talked about this, I don't know how many times, I didn't go back and count them, but over and over and over again in this book, when it gives the vision of God, it says, what in the class, it says, these words are trustworthy and true. It says that over and over again. And so he says, then he said to me, it's done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. And those who conquer, meaning who work with their consciousness, will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. And the other thing that we noted, sometimes people like to say, oh, well, there's only going to be like 144,000 people that are going to make it. Well, again, somebody that thinks that did not think clearly about the meaning of this book, um, that is a symbol. all this stuff in here is symbolic. That's a symbolic number. It's a multiple of 12. And in unity, in our metaphysical understanding, we know that 12 is spiritual expansion. Whew! Means everybody. <coughs> Guess who's going to be in this new consciousness? Everybody. We're all going there. That's what we're doing as human beings. Now in verse 20, in chapter 22, verse 1 through 6, then the angel showed me the river of life, of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing 
of the nations. And there will be no more night, there is no need of lamp nor sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. So the idea is, is that in this city there's not going to be any need for outer things because we're so conscious of God that God itself is the light. This isn't talking about some external place. We can interpret this on many levels. It's talking about what happens in our own consciousness. And as we let our own consciousness be transformed, then we know that it outpictures in how we live our lives and how we create our world and how we create our institutions and how we treat one another. It outpictures. So, did God just hand this to, the, to people on a platter? No. If you go back and look at the book of Revelation, it was written to the seven churches in Asia Minor, which today would be Turkey. And uh, scholars think it was probably Ron, John, the writer, who was a great mystic, was really writing it to the whole Christian church. And it's an amazing cycle of visions. It's, it's written in this really uh, in flamboyant style. It's, it's really like a comic book. It's like watching Star Wars. You know, it's not meant to be scary. It's like watching, it's to get your attention, it's to get you interested, and it's to make the point. And so all through this, he's, he's talking to the seven churches, and he's talking to them about the things that are blocking them from God. They're arrogant. They are too caught up in what's going on. They're too busy. They're trying to change everybody else. They're bored. Whatever it is, he goes through the list of the churches, and he says, but if you do these things, if you face yourselves, then you're going to create the new Jerusalem. And so, as you know, it, and how long does it take them to do this? It's about 16 chapters worth of stuff they got to go through. And it's these cycles. So they have locusts, and they have plagues, and they have the four horsemen of, of death and destruction and famine and all this stuff. And they have the beast and the beast's henchmen and all this business, the dragon, and all these things going on, and there's cycles, but between every cycle, there's all, you always come back, where people that were in the class? To the throne room of God. So it's like you face yourself, you face in yourself. What is it that's holding me back from my own understanding of God? Where are my fears? Where are my anxieties? Oh, whew, face them, even if they look really big and scary but keep coming back to the throne room of God and then the next layer is going to come up and then I face the next layer of myself and then the next layer comes up and I always come back to the throne room of God and that's talked about over and over and over and the conquering Christ is not this dominating mean person the battle of Armageddon is not this awful thing it is simply Christ in the army of saints right in on horses and the sword of truth is from the mouth. It's the word of truth. And all that was false falls. That's it. Really? That's truth? Well, there you go. There you have it. Must be. So that's what it is. That is what's truth. Thank you. That's what it is. And so if we're willing to keep facing ourselves one bit at a time, and asking ourselves, what am I willing to give up? What anxieties am I willing to give up? What fears am I willing to give up? What pre prejudices am I willing to give up? What criticisms am I willing to give up? Because they harm me. They keep me in a little box. And they don't create good relationships with other people. What am I willing to let go of? And as I'm willing to do that and keep coming back to God, keep praying, keep calling my power to me, that and my awareness is already in me, but opening my awareness to it, what happens then through that work is that we do create the new heaven and the new earth. Always the work, the first work is transformation of consciousness. And transformation of consciousness is always about me, about me being willing to let God transform my consciousness, being honest, open, and willing. That's a 12-step thing. How? Honesty, openness, and willingness. And if we're there, if we're willing to do that even just a little bit, then what happens to us is an amazing thing, is those layers come off. The dragons and the beasts and the locusts and the plagues and the four horsemen and all that scary stuff, it's in our consciousness and it begins to come up and we become willing to release it. We become willing to let it go and we find indeed that we are in the throne room of God in our own consciousness. 
It can be scary when it's all falling apart. There's one part in the book of Revelation where there's a great big earthquake, right? And it's so big and it says all the kings of the earth were trying to hide under the mountains, but there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Because everything was getting shook up. Does that kind of feel like what's happening? Everything's getting shook up in our own consciousness and in the way we arrange ourselves. I want to share this with you from Richard Rohr. Richard Rohr is a current author. We've got his books in our bookstore. I, I really appreciate what he says. He's a Franciscan priest, and he has a place called the Center for Contemplation and Action in Albuquerque. And this is something it happened. I think he, he has these emails that he sends out that I get, and I think this was pre-planned, but it showed up on Friday, July the 8th. How about this? Listen to this. But it was pre-planned. He didn't just tweak it. Here you go. He said, this pattern of temporary falling apart precedes every transition to a new level of faith, hope, and love. If one is not prepared to live in temporary chaos and to hold the necessary anxiety that chaos entails, one never moves into a bigger world. Notice that almost every revelation of God begins with this same warning, and we uh, actually said it today, somewhere along the line, I can't remember who, who said it. Do not be, it was in the Daily Word, do not be afraid. You know, the angels show up, tell people things. What's the first thing they always say? Don't be afraid. All right. Because fear is an entirely predictable response to any God encounter. Because any authentic experience of the absolute relativizes everything else. God is actually quite wild and dangerous. <laughs> but, we do, but we have domesticated divine experience so much that a vast majority of people have left the search entirely, finding most religious people to be fearful conformists instead of adventurous seekers of love and mystery. But that's not us, is it? No, we're unity. We're true. We are. We're adventurous seekers of love and mystery. That's what we're called to. We're the, we are. We're risk takers. We've, we already stepped out of the box a long time ago, right? That's a good thing. It doesn't mean anybody else is wrong. It just means that we have stepped out of that little old box, right? And so that's the opportunity today. These dear ones, way too many that have been in the news and way too fast on the heels of way too many not that long ago a few weeks ago and way on the too fast on the heels of way too many not that long ago and these are ones just in the news not to mention all the ones that we don't even know about these violent deaths this trauma doesn't have to be in vain I don't believe that things happen for a reason I believe that things happen and then we get to choose about if we're going to let them be meaningful or not. These situations can take us down into this lower consciousness of fear, can make us more closed. And I keep, I'll tell you this again, fear is a marketing strategy. So don't buy it. Do not buy it. Do not let anybody sell you fear. See fear words dissolve into the nothingness from which they came. That is not spiritual awakened a consciousness, fear mongering. It is just not. And I refuse to give it power. It has no power. It is not awakened. It is not about God. It is a marketing strategy, and I'm not buying it. So don't buy it. I'm, I'm, I don't usually tell you what to do, but I won't say that. You can do what you want. <laughs> But, so what the opportunity is, is to let all this trauma, all this violence, all this death have meaning in a wonderful way. To use it as the opportunity to face the dragons and the beasts and the horsemen and all that business in ourselves. Release it. Do the work to transform our consciousness so that we're coming from a new place. That's always the real work, is transformation of our own consciousness. And from that, we take new actions. So I invite you to do that, to take it. And I know you do, because you wouldn't be here if you weren't those kind of people. I know you've already been doing it. And lots of people have, and it's good. We're all in this together. So do that work, and from that, make some choices about some actions you're going to take from that place. Let God guide you. What is an action that I'm going to take from that place of love, from that place of peace, from that place of wholeness, from that place of faith, and take that action? And that, my friends, is how we are going to create this new heaven. We're, we're creating. It's not like, oh, we'll create tomorrow. Okay, no. This is, this is the work. 
You know that. It's messy. But we're doing it. We are doing the work. So I invite you right now just to call out, if you will, you can do it quietly in your heart and mind, or you can speak it out loud just in a word or two. What's your vision of this new heaven and new earth? Just not what you're going to do, but what's your vision? My vision is a world where people love themselves. You got one, Janelle? Love, harmony, joy, family, Equality. Justice. Yes. Yes. Mercy. Yes. Non-judgment. Yes. 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 This is it. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for speaking this out. Hold your vision. That's yours. God gave it to you. You said yes to it. Hold your vision. I'm going to ask you right now. I'm not going to ask you to call this out, but I'm going to ask you just to take a moment right now to go within and think, what's one thing I'm willing to do? It doesn't have to be a big thing. One little thing that I'm going to do this week toward that vision. Just take a moment. I'm not going to ask you to say it out loud. Just in yourself, what am I going to do? One little thing toward it. Got it? All right. You can do it. you got the power of God within you to do it. And I'll close just with this. This is from John Chittister, who is an incredible theologian, who's a, a Catholic uh, religious woman, a nun, otherwise known as a nun. <laughs> and I happened to see this yesterday. I went to a little workshop yesterday at Austin Recovery, a, a professional uh, workshop, and this was on the wall, so I copied it right now. There is in struggle a challenge for those parts of us that cannot fully come to life except in the darkness of adversity. Though we are in darkness, the dawn will come in its due time. For if God is in the depth of our heart, no amount of darkness can extinguish God's presence. Let's pray. Mother, Father, God, we give thanks knowing that you are in our hearts, that you are the expression of love and light within us, and we give thanks that you are the power within us for us to go forward, to change our hearts and minds, for you are that power that is the transforming power, and we're already doing it. We give thanks for the goodness that we are, and we see that good expanding. We see our world filled with love and peace and all these things that we have spoken, this new heaven and this new earth. And we affirm this and pray it in the name and through the power of our brother Jesus Christ and the Christ that lives as us. Amen.
great prize You know the only glory It's to love and be loved It's to love and be loved To love and be and be